Hero. Pioneer. Superstar. He was a seven-time NHL All-Star, a World Cup of Hockey winner, a Winter Olympic silver medalist, and a Stanley Cup champion. He stands alone at the summit as the most proficient American-born player in goals, points, playoff points, and games played. A player whose speed on the ice was only matched by his grace. Standing at 6'3", 191 pounds, he's quick, elegant, charismatic. Number 9, Mike Madano. Michael Thomas Medano Jr. was born on June 7, 1970 in Livonia, Michigan, USA. Growing up, Medano was a lively child, and it was clear he needed a team sport to expend his excess energy. Enter hockey. His dad loved the sport and taught him how to skate at the age of seven, and mom became the goalie for young Medano to shoot at. As a child, Medano breathed hockey, as he would practice at the local rink at six in the morning before going to school. And after school, he would wear his hockey jersey, waiting for dad to come home to set up the ice rink he'd built in the backyard, and he would stay out there playing until bedtime. Medano showed extraordinary potential, as he often made it onto teams as the youngest player, while his teammates were two or three years older. After the 84-85 season which saw him score 50 goals and 50 assists en route to the USA Hockey National Championship, a 16-year-old Medano had a choice to make. Players from Michigan typically completed high school hockey and would then suit up for a college or university, but Medano's exploits the previous year had Western Hockey League teams in Canada begging for his services. Medano didn't want to be in limbo for several years to wait and see where he would end up. He wanted to challenge himself in Canada as he accepted the Prince Albert Raiders invitation to join the team. Medano's start to life in Canada was a tumultuous one as he was just another young hockey talent aspiring to make it into the NHL. The competition was tough and his fellow Canadian teammates saw the American as a threat as they didn't think he belonged there, that he was taking a roster spot away from a local Canadian boy. It didn't help that Medano looked fragile, tall but slim, and most people on his team had already written him off. But when Medano stepped onto the ice for the first time, Everyone rubbed their eyes and blinked several times as they couldn't believe the things he was able to do with the puck. After scoring a hat-trick in his first game, word spread like wildfire that there was a hockey phenom in town, and before long, fans filled the stadium to witness Magic Mo in action. Medano ended up registering 30 goals and 32 assists in 68 games in his rookie campaign for the Raiders, and after improving to 47 goals and 80 assists in his second season, it was full speed ahead, heading into the 1988 NHL Entry Draft. And in a pick that surprised absolutely no one, Mike Medano was selected first overall by the Minnesota North Stars. Medano's arrival in the NHL came in the 1989 playoffs as he played two games before the North Stars were eliminated. He had gotten the taste of the Stanley Cup playoffs, a place where he would end up again in the near future. In his rookie season in 1989-1990, Medano showed the world he not only belonged in the NHL, but he was also a star in the making. He was quick, as his raw foot speed had opposing players instantly on their heels. He was energetic, as he often looked like he was at maximum speed, only to reach another gear. He was skillful, as his stick handling in mid-flight was otherworldly, and his shot was as deadly as they came. But most importantly, he played with remarkable flair. Hair flowing, jersey soaring, elegance unwavering. And the gracefulness to his play had fans worshipping him. Much to the chagrin of the rest of the league, Medano had become the bane of every goaltender's existence, a harbinger of doom for opposing defensemen, and the source of his rival's worst nightmares. This was Mike Medano. Medano ended his first season with 29 goals and 46 assists to become a Calder Trophy finalist for Rookie of the Year. And after losing out to 31-year-old rookie Sergei Makarov, in which the vast majority saw his injustice as Makarov had over a decade of professional hockey experience over Medano, the NHL rightfully clarified and changed the definition of a rookie to what we currently know, which has an upper limit of 26 years old. As Medano continued to ascend into superstardom, he helped the Minnesota North Stars, a team that had no business making the playoffs, 
upset the President Trophy winning Chicago Blackhawks, second seed at St. Louis Blues, and an Edmonton Oilers team that still iced several Hall of Fame players on it to book a place in the 1991 Stanley Cup Finals. Even though the North Stars would fall to a mighty Pittsburgh Penguins team that had the magnificent Mario Lemieux, it was the experience Medano had gained that would ultimately make him a better player. After the 92-93 season, in which Medano scored a career-high 93 points and was the team's highest paid player, the Minnesota North Stars relocated to Dallas, Texas to become the Dallas Stars. Texas was really a football state and most people there hadn't even seen ice before, and it was Medano who became the face of the team, a player who they could call their own, and a player they could ultimately rally behind. He was the closest thing to an all-American athlete and his never-ending charisma instantly captured the attention of fans. Medano had become an icon and hockey was now on the map in the Lone Star State. In Dallas's inaugural season in 93-94, Medano registered a career-high 50 goals and 93 points, but multiple injury setbacks in the following year had rendered the season lost. But something happened in 1996 that would not only see a change in Medano's style of play, but also the team's fortunes moving forward, the hiring of head coach Ken Hitchcock. He was a coach who was notorious for his defensive system, and he challenged Medano to play more offensively, making him the complete player that we now know he was. Under Hitchcock, Medano's ice time jumped up from 18 minutes a game to 25 minutes as he was in an annual contention for the Selkie Trophy as the best defensive forward, the Lady Bing Trophy as the most gentlemanly player, and the Hart Trophy as the league's most valuable player. With the acquisitions of Joe Neondike, Sergei Zuboff, Daryl Sador, and Ed Belfour, the Dallas Stars have become perennial Stanley Cup contenders for years to come. Despite initial growing pains in which the team was knocked out in the first round of the 97 playoffs to the seventh seeded Edmonton Oilers, then again in the conference finals to the Detroit Red Wings the following year, the Dallas Stars had an unforgettable 98-99 season in what proved to be the epigee of Medano's esteemed career. The team had been finding success in the regular season and had gone further and further into the playoffs, and they were looking to add one final piece to the puzzle. If only there was a player available who had a lethal shot, was a 70 goal scorer three times and a Hart Trophy recipient as the most valuable player. Players like Brett Hull just don't become available, but a fallout with the St. Louis Blues meant the Golden Brett would go on to free agency, and it was the prospect of playing with Mike Medano, among other reasons, that would attract him to Dallas, a move that would change the course of history for the two Americans. The Dallas Stars would storm into the 1999 playoffs as the President's Trophy winners, nine points ahead of the next best team. As they squared off against the eight-seeded Edmonton Oilers, memories of a Game 7 upset just two years prior still lingered, but the Stars quickly snuffed out any uncertainty as they emphatically swept the Oilers in four games. After a six-game series against the St. Louis Blues and a hard-fought Game 7 victory against the Colorado Avalanche, Medano was, eight years later, back in the Stanley Cup Finals. And even after suffering a broken wrist in Game 2, Medano knew he couldn't let the chance slip away as he went on to play in Game 3 just two days later to will his team to victory. Medano would end up playing in all the remaining games as it was the Dallas Stars who scored in triple overtime in Game 6 to bring home the coveted Stanley Cup. His 23 points in 23 games were one of the leading factors the Stars were able to win the franchise its first and only Stanley Cup. Over the next couple of seasons, Medano and the Stars continued to dominate as they returned to the Stanley Cup Finals in 2000, followed by a second round exit the year after. And with Medano on the team, the Dallas Stars were a regular participant in the playoffs. The furthest they got again was in 2008 when the team reached the conference finals only to lose to the eventual champions, the Detroit Red Wings. Medano has had a superstar career, and after the 2010 season, he was contemplating retirement. But he decided to sign a one-year contract with his childhood team, the Detroit Red Wings, in what proved to be his final season. And after 21 magical seasons in the NHL, Medano officially announced his retirement after signing a one-day contract to retire as a Dallas star 
but not before solidifying his place in American hockey folklore as the nation's leader in goals, points, playoff points, and games played. Medano chose to wear the number 9 because of his idol, Mr. Hockey Gordie Howe, and he would have his number 9 retired by the Dallas Stars, being the idol of many more up-and-coming players. He would also be inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame Class of 2014, cementing his status as one of the best. Mike Medano was a trailblazer for American hockey. During an era when there was little interest in the sport, it was Medano who became the icon for American players and after winning the 1996 World Cup of Hockey and a silver medal in the 2002 Winter Olympics for the United States, American interest in the sport was at an all-time high and it has never looked back. After retirement, Medano has continued to be a hero off the ice by starting the Mike Medano Foundation and the Mike Medano Infant and Toddler Cottage, providing assistance for at-risk children and youth in Dallas. In 2020, he chose to relocate to Minnesota to be an executive advisor, returning to the place where it all began three decades prior. As we look back at the story of Mike Medano, we can only admire what he has done for the sport of hockey. Leaving home at the age of 16 to live in a foreign country only to be admonished by his teammates, betting on himself to succeed even though the odds were against him, and changing his game to suit the team's needs. It is with this that i like us to take a lesson from Mike Medano. If you have something you want to do, take the leap of faith and see it through to the end. Persevere and have self-belief and don't let anyone put you down. Medano was able to do that and the rest is history. Few accomplished what he accomplished. Few meant as much to American hockey as he meant to American hockey. And none climbed as high as he did as an American-born player. Mike Medano was simply the United States of America's and Dallas's brightest star. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video and would like to help the channel grow, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. See you soon.